so you know how there's this thing called the outdoors and there's fields and grass out there well we're going to be making some There are three methods I'm going to show you to do this, the first of which can be done natively in Blender without any add-ons, but it just takes forever, so we're just going to call this Ian responding to my rap battle challenge. The second method is going to be using the scatter add-on, which full disclosure is the sponsor for this video. Pause. The developer told me that if the add-on is trash, I can tell you guys, and the add-on is pretty good. It's actually pretty good. And this method is going to be much, much faster, so I'm going to call this Ask NK jumping on any update that ever happens to Blender and making a video. And the third method is also going to be using the scatter add-on, although this time we've reduced the process to a couple clicks, which is much faster than the thousand steps needed for the original method. And I think we're going to call this one really How's it going? fast. So CG Matter, I have a question. How are we going to get from here to here so we can make our beautiful meadow lawn or field? And that is a great question, my average viewer. And I think it probably makes sense to do a bit of an overview before we speed run the first method. So the basic idea is we're going to start by generating our terrain. We're then going to model a basic clump of grass, use a particle system to distribute this over our geometry. And finally, we're going to do some basic shading to make this feel more like grass. So now let's go over the basic method that again doesn't use any add-ons, but has a lot of steps. So with Wonder Open, take out the default cube, replace this with a plane with a bunch of divisions set to shade smooth, then head over to the modifiers, tap tap a displace modifier with a lower strength and a new texture, which we can use any kind of noise for, but I recommend using clouds with a large scale. Now when you're happy with your terrain, just rename it something memorable, apply the displace modifier and move it aside because we now need to model our grass. And to do this, we're going to start with a plane and reshape it to a single blade, add in an array modifier to get a bunch of copies of this, and add in another array to generate a grassy grid. Now apply both modifiers, reposition the model so it's oriented correctly and separate by loose parts. And this is going to let us use the randomized transforms command to vary the location, rotation, and scale, and hopefully get something that looks a bit more random. If you want even more chaos, just join these back to a single model and enable proportional editing and start pulling around different areas of our model. And congratulations, you're now the proud parents of a clump of grass, so go ruin their privacy by posting some baby photos on a Facebook profile you made for them that they never consented for, and let's start distributing this on our terrain. We're gonna do this by selecting our terrain from before, heading over to the particles tab and creating new particle system set to hair with more particles, and for the render settings, choose object mode set to our clump of grass. We can now add some variation with our scale randomness, enable advanced so we can add some random rotation, and finally we can add a new texture, which again I'm gonna set to clouds with a large scale, and in the influence tab, enable density and hair length. But wait a second, raise your hand if you have no idea what's going on here. Well, basically we just created a basic terrain a basic clump of grass distributed this using our particle system and now we're using a procedural texture to control this distribution. This means we can play around with our texture brightness to control the overall particle growth, the texture contrast adds some patchiness which is what you see in real examples, and the texture size to control the scale of this behavior. Additionally, if we go to the object data tab and add a new vertex group which we also use for the density and length but inverted, we can actually draw out custom paths where we don't want there to be any grass. And with all these methods we can really generate a bunch of different kinds of meadows but now we need to add a bit of shading. We're gonna start by loading an H drive for better environment lighting and then for the grass network I like to use a translucent VSDF and for the color just use a noise texture with two different shades of green and finally for the texture coordinates use generated coordinates making sure to enable from instancer so that we get some nice color variation. And really, those are all the steps of the basic workflow. And if you want to use some extra models to add some randomness, just duplicate over your particle system and change some of the settings and set it to render the new object. And in general, the more layers you add here, the more realistic you can get things to look. So that was quite a few steps, wasn't it? And yeah, we could make this entirely natively in Blender like we did, but there's an add-on called Scatter, which automates pretty much all of this process. So if you remember, we started off making our terrain by manually adding modifiers and messing with procedural textures, whereas with Scatter, you just add your subdivided plane, set this as our scatter target, and in the displacement settings, you just select some noise and play around with the settings until you get the terrain you like. Okay, fine, but what about modeling our clump of grass, which we had to do manually using array modifiers, randomized terrain, transforms and proportional editing. Well, this one almost feels like cheating because Scatter comes pre-packaged with a bunch of pre-made models already. And not only do these look better than the ones I showed you how to make using my PhD in 3D modeling, but they also already come with pre-made shaders that are more complicated than the one I showed you how to make. But what about the most important step, which is distributing this model across our terrain, which we had to do with the particle system, vertex groups, and procedural textures? Well, you just click the model you want, you pick the kind of scattering you want, and then you just hit Scatter. Yeah. <laughs> And of course, we can still control all the attributes of our particle system, which is now in one nicely compressed menu, and we can still change our texture settings, which does exactly what we talked about before. You can then scatter some extra assets to add some variety to our meadow, and we can get some pretty realistic results fairly quickly. And yeah, there are some extra features like a weight painting system that works on multiple distributions at the same time, camera clipping so that particles only show up when they're in frame, boolean curves that let us clear out paths in a non-destructive manner, and a proxy system that lets us view our particles as low-res proxies, which improves playback performance by the way 
this one's available as a separate free add-on that comes with all the proxy features. But what I really want to get to is the fastest way to generate our grass. So hear me out, you add a plane, you subdivide it, add this as our scatter target, choose some procedural noise to make our terrain more interesting, go to the biomes manager, and select whatever biome you want. Perfect. 